Well, hi everybody. It's uh, Russ Reed, and I'm the co-PI for Innovate Bio. And Innovate Bio is lo is located in Austin Community College, Texas, and it's led by Lin Dr. Linnea Fletcher, who is our PI. And today, I'm just delighted because um, I have my co-PI on my goal three, uh, Tom Tubon from Madison. Hi, Tom. Hi, everyone. It's good to be here. And uh, at the controls, we have Sean Killebrew, who's our Master of Media coming from Foresight Tech, a graduate of uh, Foresight Tech, and also uh, somebody who served in the military. So we're honored to have Sean always on board and helping us. So the purpose of the Leadership Institute is to make sure that we can train people for the next generation of leaders in the biotechnology education area. And we're absolutely delighted today, aren't we, Tom? Because we have Dr. Todd Smith with us, and he's coming to us from Seattle. And uh, uh, what kind of conversation are we going to have with uh, Todd today, uh, Tom? Well, we're gonna we're gonna find out a little bit about uh, the entrepreneurial spirit here. So, um, it's with great pleasure that I I want to introduce Todd as well. Um, Todd is a very well established entrepreneur. He's been a mentor to many and an extremely talented scientist. Um, so he's been in, in, in this area, in this arena in biotech uh, for many, many decades. And I don't want to steal your thunder, Todd, by giving you uh, away too much. But I, I'd love to hear you give uh, an introduction to, to share with your background. And um, in my experience, I've had the opportunity to hear Todd and about the story and journey that he's taken. Um, his impact on many, many others in the leadership realm, but also um, the unique perspectives that Todd brings with entrepreneurship and the whole business angle. And so I, I appreciate uh, what, what Todd is going to share with us today. Um, and um, I want to turn it over to you, Todd, uh, with uh, the hopes that you give us a little bit more insight into your outstanding background, because I think no one does it justice like you do uh, with sharing your journey and your experience and some of the history that you have um, that brings you here to our leadership. Um, hey, welcome, welcome, Todd. Oh wow! Well, thanks, Tom, for us. That's uh, and and the opportunity. And, and before I get into my background a little bit, you know, and uh, well, Russ, you asked me to 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 prepare something for the Leadership Institute and a, and a course for people, and focus on entrepreneurship and uh, and startups. And so I'm going to get into that a little bit. Um, and and why I think actually. Anybody in the community college system who's going to be teaching biotechnology actually actually does have to think like an entrepreneur um, because you know it's not just working with your companies but also you're you're creating new things and in having to uh, in many cases kind of sell your value over and over and over again and, and that's what we do as a startup and so so where did I get my experience um, you know I, I went to the school of hard knocks. So I did that by, uh, you know, first completing an undergraduate degree um, way back in the uh, in the early 80s at the University of Minnesota, biochemistry and genetics. And so that set me down, you know, a bioscience pathway. Um, but what got me excited about that was about 1980 when I was meeting with my undergraduate advisor, um, Yo Messing, who invented the M13 vectors and uh, sadly passed away a couple of years ago. But he asked me what I wanted to do. And I had this article from Discover Magazine about Genentech and genetic engineering. And, and I said, that's what I want to do. And then um, and then he gave me a bunch of courses I should take. What he didn't tell me was what order to take them in. Um, and so I had some really painful learning in biophysical chemistry before physical chemistry. But that's a whole nother story. Um, I finished college, uh, met my uh, who would become my future wife and, and wife of, of over 30 years now, um, Sandra Porter, many of you know her in the uh, in the community, and uh, she brought me to Seattle. And you know what brought me to Seattle over staying in Minnesota was there were 11 biotech companies out here, you know, in, in the mid 80s. And, uh, and so I came out and I worked uh, university for a few months and then I went to genetic systems. And um, it, it, Tom's heard my talk, but one of them, I have a slide that says, you know, I've, I've, I've had a really fortunate career in that people have written books about my experiences, not about me directly, but but I was, you know, I was at Genetic Systems. It became a book called Gene Dreams, and it was about, you know, kind of the bio bucks of biotech and and, and excitement there. And and so I was at Genetic Systems for a while. Uh, it's about 200 people. We got bought by Bristol Myers Squibb while I was there. Um, 
Now I'm in a company of 30,000 and it was like, I just wasn't ready for that. So I found a 20 person startup called Microprobe, worked there for a few years and then went back to graduate school and got my PhD in medicinal chemistry. Um, after that, I did a postdoc with, with Leroy Hood. So, you know, many know him in the field of biotech as, as, as a consummate entrepreneur. He started many companies. Um, he was, you know, uh, founder of Applied Biosystems. And I would say the four pillars of modern science, uh, bioscience today, the, the, the DNA sequencer, the DNA synthesizer, protein sequencer, and the protein synthesizer. And these are the tools that, you know, have, have made synthetic biology explode because of the concept of reading and writing DNA. And so in Lee's lab, I, I worked on um, the Human Genome Project, which, which was just a, an, amazing, uh, an amazing experience. And, um, and, you know, how do you finish a postdoc? You know, well, if you're coming from Lee Hood's lab, maybe you just start a company. <laughs> so I did. I started a, a bioinformatics company uh, called Geospeza, and we worked with, uh, we did data management systems. So, you know, one of, the, one of the things that was coming out of that genome project was all this data right and how do you manage that data and how do you do things with it and we'll get into it but you know I, I was practicing some of these lean launch pad concepts early on our first pivot went from well what we're going to do is we're going to assemble genomes for people and and, and then I went to an, a, an ABRF the Association for Biomolecular Research Facilities meeting in 1998 and realized that Core Labs had a business problem dealing with DNA sequence data for their customers in that people would come to the lab, they would order a service, and then um, then they need that data delivered back. And, you know, I'm at this meeting and I'm, I'm listening to people, you know, one person talks about their huge informatics system and how cool it is. And, and everybody in the room was saying, but can we have it? Can we have it? <laughs> and I thought, you know, that's a market. And uh, I've been a member of ABRF for uh, ever since, and, and now I actually participate on some of the committees in communication and, and diversity, equity, and inclusion. So, and we're, we're we're working on bringing that together with Innovate Bio. So that's that's you know um, that entrepreneurism. It's always seeing something that needs to be done in the world, and then and then figuring out how you can uh, make you know make things happen, bring two groups together, make a new product. You know all of these concepts. So, so that's you know. Um, my background, uh, Geospeza was acquired by Perkin Elmer in 2011. And uh, I went again, you know, from the small company to the big company. This time I stuck around for a little bit longer, uh, about two and a half years uh, working at Perkin Elmer. And that, that really helped me understand how big companies think, how they work, how they operate, and um, how much I like being in startups. <laughs> so, so with that, I, uh, I spun myself back out and uh, started working with with uh, Sandra on uh, digital world biology and got involved in the in the projects here. You know, so, you know, Tom and Russ, we've known each other for a long time. In fact, Russ is, talks about a story where he visited Geospeza when there was a workforce development grant when Sandy was working there. So we've kind of traded off over the years. Um, but, you know, working with the, uh, uh, you know, in Innovate Bio, it was BioLink before that, in the community college uh, system and working with people, there's there's all this passion for for helping people succeed and, and you know, um, <clears throat> preparing them for the workforce. And, and so, I, you know, I share those passions and then I could bring my talents and skills to uh, to helping do things for the uh, for the community. So, you know, in that I do, uh, you know, if anything's wrong on the website, if you're visiting it, it was my fault. Um, if, uh, you know, <laughs> those kinds of things. Also, these uh, sorts of endeavors in both community and education. So, so with that, um, I don't know if there's any questions before I, I go on to the Hey, Todd, I do have a, a just kind of some insight questions because yeah. given your, 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 the depth of your background as an entrepreneur, um, I can see a lot of parallels are drawn between being in um, a small startup company and there's these, these principles of lean startup and then being an educator. You know, there are a lot of similar mm -hmm. challenges and such. And so um, despite the similarities, how do we as educators develop that mindset um, to think outside of that academic box to be more entrepreneurial? I mean, that's, I think, one of the key things. And so you've dabbled in so many different arenas that I think that your opinion on this would be really, really insightful. So how do you get a, how do you get an educator thinking like an entrepreneur? Yes, that's, 
and that's what we're going to do in the class. <laughs> so, so one of the first steps um, that you need to get comfortable with and practice is talking to people and learning from them and pitching your ideas. And um, no idea is a bad idea. Um, sometimes people, ah, that'll never work. If you hear that enough, it might just work. You know, so the concept of, of what I'm going to call a loon shot. I just finished reading a book I recommend for everybody called Loon Shots. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, you know, so, so getting out of the office, if you will, and talking to people, pitching that idea, seeing what resonates, um, learning, you know, I think a lot of times we hear frustrations from our colleagues about their programs and their schools, and you have to understand how people think, right? So if you're an entrepreneur, you have you have a vision for something, you know, Geospace, it was people needed these data management systems, right? And we came out with a perspective. What we learned was it wasn't a bad perspective, but it wasn't necessarily a perspective that was going to get you established in the market and sell things to people, you know? So, so the difference between a business and a college uh, and a faculty is, is a business needs to sell things, right? You know, because your, your, your sustainability is a function of money that that comes in the door and product sales are the best way to do that. You know, you can get investment money, but if you get if you only do investment money, you're eventually going to go out of business and you're going to you're going to have a lot of unhappy investors. So you have to learn how to sell, right? If you're in a in a school, um, you still have to learn how to sell. It's just your sustainability, your thesis and the value proposition is a little different, right? You know, for the school, it's it's actually students coming in and, and, and paying tuition, right? And and so we often hear we need to have so many people in a class to do this class. Well, that's because you know the school has to operate as a business. You know, and so the more you can understand that and understand the value points, the better you can then pitch pitch your ideas and also succeed at uh, at getting students into your class. So that's that's uh you know, and it's it's not a big step from what you do, but it's it's just the appreciation for how others around you are thinking about the problem. Does that does that answer it? Absolutely. I, I think that it, it sheds a lot of light on on perspectives and thinking. And I think you know, many times we just over we just glaze over a lot of these concepts as educators. Uh, but I think that just hearing it and hearing these concepts um, and you articulating, I think is really, really going to be super valuable for yeah. our business. Also for me, I mean, I, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so what we're going to do is, is um, so one is, is working with your local startups is just a really great thing to do. And, and for a couple reasons, you know, if you, if you compare a big company to a startup, you can get, you know, some people on your advisory board from a large company because there's, there's people with passion for this in industry. So, so, so first off, asking people to do things in industry is, is really okay. And a lot of people will, will return their phone, return that phone call and help you out because they just have passion for, for helping the next generation of, of uh, people. And in particular, they need technicians, right? So that's another really, really uh, good motivation for them. But what makes the startups really cool is one is your founders of startups, <clears throat> you know, tend to be generation generationally a little closer in age to a lot of your students. <laughs> so, so you know, universities are getting very interested in entrepreneurism, right? And so they have they have programs now. I'm a mentor at the University of Washington. Uh, Co Motion is what it's called, but it's you know traditionally the tech transfer office, and they invest a lot of time and money. And they have grant funding from NSF for programs to teach entrepreneurism. We call it i -Core. And uh, and so I'm a mentor and, and, you know, and so I'm working with, you know, graduate students who are thinking about starting companies, you know. So, you know, and if you think of, you know, a lot of graduate students and a lot of community college graduates, they're, um, it's, it's, you know, age-wise, they're like peers, <laughs> you know. So, so that's pretty cool. So, so one is, is you get, to, um, you get to really kind of, you know, see how they're thinking and some of the, the struggles they're going through. The other is, um, you know, small business just, you know, Jim Hewlett's always telling us in, in his area, doing research projects with the small companies is really worthwhile because they, they really need help. 
you know, so you can actually get students engaged easier than you can maybe with a larger company. And, and that's one, they need the help. And two, they don't have the bureaucratic overhead that a big company has, you know, so they'll, they'll be concerned about IP. They'll be, you know, they'll have uh, concepts of, of confidentiality and, and things like that, but they don't have massive legal departments that kind of can, you know, ice, ice an activity, right? So you've got that flexibility, you've got that spirit, you've got that uh, kind of pure, pure opportunity. So, so those are all really good, good reasons. It's also really good for people going into biotech to understand that um, there's a lot of really great innovation going out. Not all of it is going to succeed. So you want to really prepare yourself as best you can technically and, uh, you know, soft skills around communication, things like that, so that you, you can go from job to job, you know, so it's, it's not uncommon for people to get laid off. Um, the people who have the hardest time finding the next job are often the PhDs. Technicians, they get picked up right away because because everything they learned at that company is a skill someone else needs. You know, so they they might be unemployed for weeks, whereas, you know, PhD could be unemployed for months. <clears throat> so, you know, so these are, you know, good things to, to teach, right? And, and working with startups is, is a great way for everyone to experience the joy and, and less joy. So, so with that, what we want to do is there's a methodology that's emerged for, you know, so how do you, you know, I just was talking about how companies can fail. How do they prevent that? How, how do they, you know, minimize the risk of failure? And there's been a methodology that's emerged that I think all, all good entrepreneurs, you know, when I look back, you know, I was doing GSVs before we had this, this methodology called Lean Startup. And, you know, when I was at that ABRF meeting, when I got home from that meeting and I heard everybody needed this kind of software, I had the business cards from people who attended my poster and I, and I called them and I, and I just went through like, well, what does it need to do? What, what value would that bring? Um, would you pay, you know, 40, 50, $60,000 for this? Um, because our market wasn't big. I had to charge a lot of money. And sure enough, I was validating my assumptions, right? And I was testing my hypotheses about this market and the opportunity and that's what that's what the lean launchpad is um there's a uh, quote by winston churchill that steve blank uses on one of his uh his blogs and and you know when we do the class we'll have all these references but steve blank is is really well known in this community for for promoting lean launchpad and you know he has this quote from uh, churchill that just says success consists of going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. So when you think about pitching ideas, right, and concepts, you know, you start out really rough and you hear a lot of no and you refine that and then you start to, you know, eventually you start to hear some yes. And then you refine a little bit more and, you know, if, you, if you're lucky, they're jumping up and down, <laughs> screaming, I want it, I want it, I want it. <laughs> you know, and that's that's kind of what you're looking for in a startup. So, so you know, a startup, is really by definition is, is an organization built to search for a repeatable and scalable business models. So when you start a company, you know, you're doing an investor pitch and they say, what's your business model? Well, that's a hypothesis. You have improved it, right? If your company gets bought by a big company, it will succeed if you have transcended the startup. That is what the big company wants to do is put salespeople onto your problem. And if, if they can put more salespeople on and they can see more revenue growth, then what you have is a scalable, repeatable business model. If every time they go out in the field, they have to learn something new and try a new approach, you have a startup, right? And so think about that when you're designing a class, right? You have to figure out what, what's needed in the world, what the latest technologies are, what, um, what could bring students in and get them excited. And that is that is lean launchpad. You know, it's just you haven't formalized it. So what we want to do in the class is is go through this formalization. And, and there's a, a concept called the business canvas, which really consists of about you know five five columns on the top that has a problem, a solution, some things about um, what makes you unique in uh, in providing that solution, and then market segments. And two of them, um, and value proposition in the middle, the value proposition in the market segments are your hypotheses. 
You know, if I do X, I can get Y. And it's if I do X, I can get Y from who? OK, and um, you know, one of the things that I go through when I'm mentoring um, new entrepreneurs is concepts like they'll say we're going to sell to industry and then you have to go industry aren't people. You know, we're going to sell to this department and it's like that department's not a people, you know, and then and then you you get them to go, oh, it'll be a marketing person in this department. It'll be a scientist in this department. It'll be a person and then and then you start to unpack that and you go. Now you're starting to think about an ecosystem. So you have a product. Who buys your product? Who uses your product? Who determines who's going to use that product and who's going to buy that product? And, and who doesn't want to see you succeed? You know, and, and so you have these, these uh, um, cast of characters, if you will, and you, and you have to put them together into ecosystem maps. That, uh, and, and, you know, and so what we're going to do in the class is work on developing a new class or an ATE proposal because I can say if you if you do a really good business canvas around something, you've actually have an outline for a really excellent proposal because you've you've got your problem, your solution, your your hypotheses, and your validation, right? And and you know and part of it is is getting out and talking to people to uh, to test your ideas and and so it's um it'll be a lot of fun and uh, and it'll be you know I think some people are really going to love it some are going to find it makes them a little uncomfortable but you know one of one of the books um, I read I think it was the E Myth you know being an entrepreneur is to learn to work outside of your comfort zone you know and 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 always push that right okay I'm comfortable doing this well then you need to do something else. <laughs> What makes you, you know, what makes you squirm? <laughs> Those kinds of things. So that's, that's kind of in, the, in a nutshell what we're gonna what we're gonna do and, and try to accomplish. And and who knows? Maybe we'll get some really interesting ideas for uh, for the next ATE and and next uh, set of classes at at a school. Yeah. And so yeah, so that's kind of you know that was what I wanted to say. Well, uh, Todd, I think that's pretty cool. And uh, yes, I, I remember, I actually remember uh, visiting you when you were with Geospasia. I think I was with Patricia Dombrowski. Yes, you yes, yeah. yes. That yeah. is going back a long time ago. Oh, oh my gosh, yes. That's, yeah. That, I would have to say that that was probably around 2006, 2007, around there. Yeah, yeah, and we, we got some money, you know, and. You know, by the way, that always makes entrepreneurs very happy. <laughs> and by then I had grown my business stuff more. So I had a president and and, um, you know, and so we were getting a little bit more formal. So it was, it was uh, so. So Todd, you know, have, having gone through that entrepreneurial process myself mm -hmm. and um, having been with large pharma and then, you know, a startup, um, you know, when we're, we're uh, the, the thing that I'm trying to think about is, um, when did you know it was time to exit, or or was it that Perkin Elmer, uh, Perkin Elkin, Elm, Elmer, is, is it Perkin Elmer? Yeah. When when did they approach you, or did you approach them, or what what happened in that process? Oh, I just oh, think yeah. it's fascinating. It it is. So um, what happened was they started a DNA sequencing lab, mm -hmm. and because and and, and actually. When we went from the Sanger sequencing, you know, the single columns to then next generation sequencing, I went out to a conference in Providence, Rhode Island, and I was writing a, uh, a phase two SBIR. And it was a um, it was a resubmission. So, you know, again, I, I what Winston said, man, it's you know, it's all about failing, failing and failing, and never losing your enthusiasm. And so I need I said, I need to learn this stuff. So I went to this meeting and I, I learned all the key things I needed for the proposal, um, which by the way, we got funded, uh, so that's good. And uh, but more importantly, there is this sales guy from Roche, 454 was the platform at the time. And uh, and I was always good at getting out of the office and getting to um, getting somebody to buy me dinner. And uh, and so I, I tagged along with Roche, with, with customers of his, and uh, we spent the evening chatting and we knew people and this and that and well fast forward 
Perk and Elmer starts the sequencing lab. He's doing business development for it. They need an informatics system. He calls. And so we were brought on as a, uh, you know, as a vendor, as, as a, and they were a client of ours. And that, uh, that was very successful. And then, you know, of course, we're always struggling, looking for more money, things like that. And uh, they got, you know, they were concerned somebody might acquire us. So they offered first. <laughs> so, yeah, and that's, that's kind of, you know, how yeah. that, that worked out. I love that story. You know, it's one thing to have. Yeah. It's one thing to have started up a company, but it's a beautiful scenario when you're acquired and you make an exit, right? I mean, that's what, it, that's, that's it what's really cool. It is. Yeah. And, you know, we were, you know, being a software company, you know, and, and this is the one, you know, because I'll, I'll talk to a lot of people who are doing bioinformatics software companies. And, you know, as you guys know, with Biotech Careers, we have this database. And, and I actually use that database a lot for my own consulting practice. And, um, but, you know, they're going up against 300 competitors that, you know, you got you to gotta figure out how to, how to really have a distinguished message. And, um, and when we were acquired, my list was only 100. <laughs> But it was very difficult. It was a very difficult market because it was so fragmented and, mm -hmm. and and very hard to distinguish yourself in terms of of what you did. So, so in some in some ways, um, the acquisition was was good for us in terms of of finding a home that could help us with getting into the market a little bit better. And uh, you know, and they you know, I left the company. Eventually, pe people left, and they had to discontinue stuff. But but it had a good run. I mean, you know, the company itself. The products were over 20 years, uh, 20 years in the market, and and if you go on the web and search for our software, you still find a lot of labs still running it. So um, they have source code and things like that now to to keep going. But Very it's kind of cool. cool. Yeah. Great, Tom. Any questions? No, but I for one, I, I am a um, professed user of your software um, for the years and years and years and stuff. And when it comes to the, the whole sequencing software and such and so it, it made my job a little bit easier too um so i i, I thank you for that um but yes. I, I'm, I'm, I'm i'm just pleased to be on board here um with uh you todd and 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 then russ with your background too as an entrepreneur i mean this is an excellent way to really um hit those marks with our leadership institute participants um to really showcase this whole idea of the importance for um, business and industry partnerships and then from a, 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 a initial standpoint that perspective of understanding the entrepreneur mindset so um i, yeah. I just want to say thanks uh, for yeah. sharing with us thanks for joining us today todd really appreciate it and uh we're going to look forward to that case that you're going to have for those participants and I think yes. you hinted at what it's going to be today. I did. <laughs>